How can we use four vectors in relativity to solve the problem of particle decay? So if you have a particle that decays into two or more particles or daughter particles, then how can we use four vector algebra to study that kind of a problem? So in this video lecture, I'm going to give you the standard solution of a two body decay of an unstable particle. Now this kind of a problem will act as a springboard for further problems where these kind of decays or particle interactions are involved. You see in uh, nuclear physics or high energy particle physics, physicists are mostly studying the interactions of subatomic particles traveling at very high velocities or the decays of particles traveling at very high velocities. Therefore, mathematically studying those interactions or collisions or decays in terms of calculations which are consistent with relativity is very very important. So what I will discuss today will give you a sort of an idea of how to approach a problem like this. If you appear in any kind of an examination where a similar kind of a question is asked, you should be able to answer that and maybe in future if you're interested in becoming a particle physicist or something, then this will act as a springboard for uh, even more complicated problems that maybe you will do in the future. So let's start. So I'm going to discuss how a particle decays into further two particles and how to analyze that problem from the perspective of four vectors. Now in my earlier lectures, I have talked about four vectors. These are physical quantities that we define in four dimensional space time having four components, three components associated with space x, y, z and one component associated with time. I have already defined velocity four vector, acceleration four vector, energy momentum four vector, etc. When we define these kind of four vectors, then we can easily uh, use them in calculations that involve uh, some sort of relativistic interaction. All right, so here we have a particle A that decays into two daughter particles, let's suppose B and C. So particle A decays into B and C. We are going to do the study or the analysis in the rest frame of particle A. So we are looking at this interaction in the rest frame of particle A. So let's suppose particle A has rest mass of MA, particle B has rest mass of MB, particle C has rest mass of MC. How can we use four vectors to study this problem? Well, the four vector associated with energy momentum is given in this particular manner. So a four vector is represented by P mu because this is momentum, so I use P. Mu represents the uh, superscripts, mu is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. The zeroth component is E upon C or the time component. The first, second, third correspond to the three components in space X, Y, Z. So these are the relativistic momentum components. So I'm going to define the four vector momentum for each particle before the decay and after the decay, of course. And then I'm going to use conservation of momentum to sort of analyze the problem to obtain some sort of an unknown, okay? So what is the unknown involved? Maybe we already know the energy of the first particle, but we may not necessarily know the energy of, let's suppose the second or the third particle, right? So how can we obtain one quantity in terms of the other? That I can demonstrate very easily. So let's suppose that first I'm talking about particle A. Now, since the entire analysis is being done with respect to rest frame of particle A, therefore, the momentum corresponding to particle A, four vector is nothing but what is the energy of A? Let's suppose the energy of A is given by Ea, which is nothing but the rest mass energy Ea is equal to Ma c square divided by c because we are doing the analysis in the rest frame of A. So that means A is at rest. So its relativistic momentum components are 0, 0 and 0. What about a particle B? So for particle B, I have Pb mu is nothing but the energy Eb upon C, Eb being the relativistic energy of particle B, right? Which contains not only the rest mass energy, but also the energy associated with his relativistic kinetic energy. And then you have the relativistic momentum, let's suppose Pb1, Pb2, and Pb3. Similarly, we have for particle C, Pc mu is equal to the relativistic energy of particle C, which is Ec upon the speed of light and then Pc1, Pc2 and Pc3. So these are the four vector momentum associated with particles A, B and C. All right. Now, what is the concept we are going to use? We are going to use the concept of conservation of momentum. Well, just like in mechanics, where you must have studied interactions of particles or collisions of particles, you apply the conservation of momentum where you add the momentum in terms of being a vector before and after the collision. 
Similarly, whenever we are studying interactions in relativity, we can use the four vector momentum that we have defined before and after the interaction or before and after a particular event or a decay process that is happening. Which means that if we apply conservation of momentum, the momentum before the decay is equal to the momentum after the decay process has happened. So we can write that applying conservation of momentum, I can simply say that the momentum 4 vector of A is equal to the momentum 4 vector of B plus the momentum 4 vector of C. Now the mu here simply represents that it's a 4 vector, right? How do we know it's a 4 vector? It is given by mu, this uh, superscript. So mu goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, contains the 4 components. However, in the further calculations, I'm not going to write mu anymore because the expressions will look very complicated. So I'm going to sort of remove the mu here. But every time I write PA or something, it will represent a 4 vector. All right. So now, if I am interested in finding out some or kind of an unknown, let's suppose that EA or sorry, EB is unknown. All right. If I'm interested in finding out what is EB, what to do? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply figure out a way to remove the uh, terms corresponding to C. So what I'm going to do is, so let's suppose I can rewrite this by saying PC is equal to PA minus PB. Again, these are all four vectors. Okay. These are all four vectors. Now, if the left hand side is a four vector, which is equal to right hand side, which is also a four vector, it simply means that the magnitude of the left hand side is equal to the magnitude of the right hand side. How do you find the magnitude of a four vector. You find the magnitude of a four vector by finding the inner product of that four vector with itself. This gives you the square of the magnitude, right? We have discussed this earlier in one of my uh, videos where we discuss the energy moment of four vector. We can also figure out what is the uh, square of the magnitude of any uh, energy moment of four vector. So if we find out the magnitude, all we need to do is take a square. So this is not a very simple case of taking a square. It involves an inner product, which means we introduce a negative sign before the product of the time components. But just to keep uh, the discussion simple, I'm just going to write a square here. Okay, so let's say that PC square is equal to PA minus PB square. It simply means that the magnitude of the left hand side is equal to the magnitude of the right hand side or, or the square of the magnitude. So what is PC square or rather the square of the magnitude of the four vector PC? I have discussed this in my earlier lecture where we obtained the magnitude square of any energy momentum four vector. The magnitude square of any energy momentum four vector is given as if I write this as P mu and P mu. This by the way corresponds to a, how an inner product is defined uh, with respect to four vectors. This is equal to M naught or minus M naught square C square. Okay, this is a minus m naught square c square, it's a minus m naught square c square. All right, so if the particle has a rest mass m naught, then the magnitude square of the four vector momentum is equal to minus m naught square c square. So this way we can kind of simplify the problem. So for the magnitude square of PC, what we can write here is that this is minus mc square c square. mc meaning the mass or the rest mass of the particle c and this c meaning the speed of light. What about the right hand side? Well, what we do in the right hand side is you multiply each individual term uh, as a product. So you say that this is PA square plus you say that this is PB square minus 2PA P B right. So this can be written as minus M C square C square is equal to again P A square. What is P A square? In a similar fashion, it is minus M A square C square. This is nothing but the square of the magnitude of four vector momentum, which involves the rest mass of that particle. So it's a minus M naught square C square where M naught is a rest mass for individual particle A B C. I'm writing that as M A M B M C respectively. And this is again P B square is what M B square C square minus. So this is the term that I'm interested in figuring out. So if I want to find out what is 2PAPB, so let me obtain that here, okay? So let me obtain that here in the left-hand side, 2PAPB. So think of this as a dot product between uh, two vectors. If we have a vector A and B, and we find the dot product, what we do, we multiply the respective terms and then we add them up. In four vectors, this also represents something similar. We multiply the each individual or respective components and then add them up. The only difference being that we introduce a negative sign before the product of the time components. Okay, so what is PA? This is PA, right? What is the time component of PA? It's EA upon C, right? This is EA upon C. And what is PB? Well, this is PB, right? What is the time component of PB? It's EB upon C, right? This is EB upon C. All right, now this is a product of the time components. So we introduce a negative sign here, right? 
what about the rest so 0 into this 0 into this and 0 into this so you will have plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 so this is what 2 P A P B is but there is a 2 term here so I am going to write 2 here so what is this this is effectively minus 2 E A E B and in the denominator you have c square what is ea because we are doing the entire analysis in the rest frame of the particle a ea is nothing but the rest mass energy of particle a right so rest mass energy of particle a is what minus 2 m a c square the rest mass energy of particle a is m a c c square and then you have eb and again c square so the c square c square gets cancelled and we are left with minus 2 m a E B. So let me plug this here in this particular term. Okay, if I plug this here in this particular term, what do I get? Well, this is a minus sign here. Minus and minus will become plus. You have two M A E B. Okay. So since E B is the unknown, and we are interested in figuring out what is the energy of the particle B, therefore we can rewrite this by saying that this is two M A E B is equal to M a square c square plus m b square c square minus m c square c square so this is equal to e b is equal to m a square plus m b square minus m c square into c square divided by 2 m a so this is one very relevant expression that we have obtained for the energy of the daughter particle B in terms of the rest masses of all the particles. So, M A rest mass of particle A, M B rest mass of particle B, M C rest mass of particle C. So, and C is the speed of light. So, based on the rest mass, we have obtained the relativistic energy of the particle B in this kind of a decay process. So, there you have it. We have come up with a way of studying an interaction or a decay and obtaining one unknown in terms of, let's suppose, the rest masses. What if you say, okay, sir, but what if I am interested in figuring out EC instead of EB? Well, that is quite simple. If you are interested in figuring out EC instead of EB, then we can say that EC is equal to what? EC is equal to the total relativistic energy EA minus EB. Yes, the relativistic energy EA minus EB. So what is EA? EA is nothing but MA C square minus EB. Okay, let me take that. To the right hand side so that I can perform the calculations so if I take this to the right hand side what do we have here EC is equal to MA C square minus here you have MA square plus MB square minus MC square C square upon 2 MA so this simplifies to 2 MA here we have 2 MA square minus m a square and then you have minus m b square plus m c square c square so finally we come up with an expression e c is equal to m a square minus m b square plus m c square c square upon 2 m a so there you have it if the energy of the particle C is the unknown and this should be the energy of the particle in terms of the rest masses of all the particles involved. So that is it. This gives you a method of studying decays of particles or interactions of particles where relativistic interactions are involved. If a subatomic particle is traveling at very high velocities, velocities near about the speed of light and it experiences a decay into further daughter particles or if it interacts with further particles to create a new set of particles, then how do you study those kinds of problems that do not violate principles of relativity? Well, one way is you define the four vectors before and after the interaction, you apply conservation of momentum and then you'll get a set of equations where you'll have to sort of remove the unknowns and then you should get the desired results. So as we have obtained here, we have obtained the unknown EB as well as unknown EC, which are the energy of the daughter particles in terms of the rest masses of all the particles. So that is all. You can get questions like these in various examinations where you may have either exactly the same question or some modification of this question. You can approach in a similar fashion. If you study high energy physics, maybe you will be dealing with problems which are slightly more complicated than this, but this will act as a, a starting point 
to study or understand how uh, you know four vectors can be used to perform different kinds of calculations in relativity. So that is all for today. I am Divya Jyoti Das. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.